Acts chapter 17 that we are the offsprings of God. Yes. And and First Peter talks about we are we are partakers of his divine nature, which means that we're not just regular Ethel. We're not just normal Jim. Jim is in there, Ethel's in there, but something else happened when I received Jesus. And and so I'm different. This is why, hallelujah, this is why we can overcome the other stuff that folk can't overcome. This is why we got something that we got from heaven that, that the world and the devil has no answer for. We're supernatural men. We're not hooked. We don't have to be hooked on anything. You know, he, he, and this is what makes us different. The Bible lets us know that there should be a distinction between the righteous and the unrighteous. There should be distinction between the saved and the unsaved. Because we have a power from heaven. You shall be endued with what? Power from on high. And now you can witness for me. That just means you can, you, what you do, you can represent me. Because, and you can't represent me without this power. So, so I say all that to say, we're supernatural people, man. Something different supposed to be happening with us. Amen. I said something different supposed to be happening with Amen. us. Amen. The stuff to take other folk under shouldn't have to take us under. And if we get under, we just come back. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, so we've been talking about walking on the water and uh, or getting out of the boat, whatever we're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about all of this. And so um, this, is, this is a real faith builder. And I'm not, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go back and review too much. And I'll, if, if it comes back to me, I'll review it as the Lord leads me. But I want you to go back to uh, Matthew uh, chapter 14, please. Glory to God. I'm supernatural. How about you? <laughs> okay. Now, um, we made several good points, on, and <laughs> we made several good points. And but on last Wednesday, we made the, the point that we're talking about was following, following God. And um, um, I've been kind of oh, too much wind on me. I've been kind of uh, talking about part of my introduction is, you know, why did, why do some people see manifestations? And other people don't. Why is it that some people just seem to just live in a perpetual crisis? And then some people live, it, it, lo it looks like, it just looks like perpetual crisis. And some people look like they just got perpetual peace. They don't ever have a problem. Everything always hunky-dory for them, which is not true. But it, it all depends on, and some people are not always in a crisis. Because sometimes what we think of the crisis ain't no crisis. But we act like it's a crisis. And so uh, we, 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 we respond like that. But one of the reasons is because of um, um, doing what God says. And so Peter walked out of the, out of, on the water to go to Jesus. Y'all remember that? Of course you do. But what we're talking about is we like, because this story contains so much about how to, how to, see the power of God move and the miraculous power of God move and, the, and God intervening on my behalf. And so we're pulling out point. And so today is going to be pretty dynamic. So I want you to, you know, make sure your wig is uh, pinned on pretty good. And I'm going to try to take my time. Not take my time, like take long, but I, it's so much here. Verse, verse 22. Um, for Matthew 14, 22. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to where? The other side. While he sent the multitudes away. So I, I just want to read that because I'm going to spend a lot of time just in that one verse. And, and we said this last week, Wednesday night. He said immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat made them go. The old King James says restrained them. Uh, excuse me. Constrained them. So that means that he, he compelled them. He urged them. He made them. He, uh, he just came short of, you know, hog tying them and making them get into the ship to go. But, but he, he kind of gently forced them. You know, you ever, you ever, <laughs> you ever uh, maybe, if, you, if you're a parent and, you know, your child was young and uh, 
uh, uh, I want, I, want, I, I don't know, maybe make them take a bath or something. I don't want to take a bath. I'm scared of water. I don't want to take a bath. Uh, well, that's probably not a good illustration, but it's just play, like, act like it is. Um, and and at some point, or whatever, whatever you you tell them to do it, and I don't want to. And he's like, look, get in the doggone. <laughs> you know how we do, right? I think that's what happened because the disciples were pushing back. Yeah. And so, and I told you, I went to this long explanation last Wednesday night. You can get it. It was a good explanation, by the way, too. Yeah. So you can go get it. But, um, but they were pushing back. And Jesus said, like, go. He made them go. He made them go. He, 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 he leaned on them to go. And we said, uh, Wednesday, it was probably against their better judgment because they had, they had been there. But we got to get big ups. <laughs> we have to, yeah, big, get big up to the disciple because with all of that, yet, they obey. And I talked about how a lot of times there are things we don't want to do that God tells us to do. Whether we're reading the word or God impresses us to, to do. And, and, and for whatever reason, we don't want to do it. And for whatever reason, um, um, even we know it's the will of God, we know it's the right thing to do, and sometimes we just don't do it. And so I, I jumped off talking about how if I'm going to see the hand of God, the peace of God, the, the power of God, the provision of God, um, walk in the joy of the Lord. I'm talking about, I'm talking about walking in it. I know things happen, but golly, we can still walk in the joy of the Lord. And if we're going to do that, we got to follow and put ourselves in a place where, where God can manifest himself. And I said this, God is not going to manifest himself when we're not following what he asked us to do. Thank you so much for that. Amen. Yeah. And so if God, God has asked me to do something and I'm like, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I, 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 I cannot expect God to manifest himself. They, see, they never would have saw Jesus. They never would have saw Jesus walk on the water. Peter never would have partake of the miracle if he didn't do what God told him to do. If they never would have got in the boat, they never would have seen a miracle. So he had to make them go. So there's times that even though I'm, I'm reluctant and there's times that I don't, God, I can't see it. I don't understand. I don't want to do it. And my own wisdom tells me this. And that's the problem because he said, lean not to your, in all your ways, what? And what he'll do. He'll do, he'll tell you where to go, how to go, and what to do. So we, we said this, that, see, if I'm going to experience goodness of God on a major level. I'm not talking about something I manufacture. I'm talking about the blessing of God, the unexplainable power, supernatural blessing of God. I got to do what he tells me to do. I got to be where he tells me to be. Period. Period. And there's a whole of scripture Jesus talks about in John 14. One of my favorite scriptures, verse 21, he said, he has my commandment and keeps them. Is he that loves me. In other words, he the person has the word, and, and not just uh, the written word, whatever God tells you to do is a command. Not a suggestion, it's a command. It's not when you get ready, it's, it's, it's not I ain't feeling it. No, you feel it whenever he tells you to do it. That's when you start feeling it. So, so there's a lot of people that, that are out of position because they, 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 they're not just following God. They push back, but they still win. And God, God, God just let me know too. He said, uh, even, even again, and I don't know I keep saying this, but he said, see, there's that, that people, you're talking to people. That's, that's, Cause he's trying to take the church somewhere. He's and he taking it. But, but see, the church can only go as far as the people go. And he said, I'm talking to people. There's people, God talking to some of y'all right now. Right now, I've been talking to you and, and he's using me to kind of, you know, because there's things he told you to do. There's things he told you to stop. <laughs> there's things he told. He said, he, he said listen, uh, uh, do this. And, uh, uh, um, uh, mm -hmm. and that's, 
I, I'm not the most perfect example, trust me. But that's the good thing about God because he didn't require to do it perfectly. Because didn't Peter mess up? Yes. And what did Jesus do? Immedi the Bible says immediately he, he, he rescued him. So I want to talk today about how come, why do we kind of like not want to do it? Yeah. Why do we push back? Mm, do you want to know? Mm. Okay. Now, um, well, let's go ahead and read down through. Well, let's read. We haven't re actually read through the whole thing in a while. Look at verse 25. Now, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer as I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered, said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come out out there on that water. And he said, Come on, Peter. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you little faith, why did you doubt? Okay, so I want to go back <laughs> up there to 22 because, you know, we, we, we hammered this point. Jesus made them go. Now, there's something else I want to deal with. So he said, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him. Where did he make him go? tell him to go? To the other side. So he did not say, y'all just go out there in the water and, 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 and do the best y'all can. Right. See, if, see if we can make it over there. Or y'all go out there and drown. Uh, uh, he didn't say, what, what did he tell him? To do what? Okay. So Jesus gave him an instruction, didn't he? What was the instruction? Go to the other side. Now, God does not call anyone to fail. He does not call anyone to fail. And in that instruction, <laughs> in that instruction was the assurance that they were going to make it to the other side. Uh, you follow me? God would not tell me to do something that I cannot do. Now, he didn't promise that they wouldn't have some opposition, that they wouldn't have some tests, that they would have some adversity. He didn't promise. He, told, he didn't tell them y'all wouldn't, but he did say, by, fact, by the mere fact, he said, go to the other side. He has commissioned them to go, and he's responsible to see to it that they make it. Yeah. So, so when God tells me something, um, he does not require me to do something I'm not able to do. Now, in my natural makeup, and my own training, education, uh, uh, intellect, maybe I can't. But here's the point. <laughs> Whenever he tells us to do something, along with that instruction is a divine enabling, right, empowerment, right. uh, equipping, in that now you don't you didn't get that from the school you got that from him if he tells me to to do this then he in that promise in that direction is the equipment is the power empowerment to do it so so it's so wonderful because now and, unless I that's why Peter said he said come if Peter hadn't stepped out see all of that able to walk on the water was in that word come and so that thing God telling you to do and telling me to do and then we're thinking we disqualify ourselves like I don't know if I can do that I've never done that before I've never been there before and there's nobody else in my family done that I'm too old I'm too black I'm too white I'm too wide I'm too narrow <laughs> well I know that sounds that sound comical but whatever excuse we come up with is funny <laughs> whatever excuse we come up with is funny if God told us to do something and so what happens is we disqualify ourselves because we're looking at ourselves and God said, no, if I told you to do it, there's an anointing on you, there's an enabling on you, there's some power in you to pull it off. Good God Almighty. Yeah. 
Yeah, if I give you a word and say, by, my, by your stripe, by his, my stripe, I am healed. There's power in that to pull it off. Yes. Yeah. So that thing, you know, I, I know the thing God told you, you know, do in your family, do in your community, do in your church, uh, 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 do in your career. Start this at the job. Do this, you know, and, and people are like, well, I don't have time. God knows how much time you got. Uh, I, nobody knows me. God knows who knows you. He knows who you need to know. And see, and by the, and by, <laughs> slow down, friendly. Okay. When God tells you something, let's say, let's say he, 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 he tells you to do something, you know, okay, okay, all right. You need to say something to your child now. God is already dealing with your child. Yes. If he send you to somebody, he, he's already, go ahead, obey God. God is already dealing with, God is already into your future waiting for you to catch up. He would not ask you to do something and not, God, Psalm, uh, Isaiah 50, I love it, Isaiah 50, I think 17 says, the Lord is my helper. No, Isaiah 41 says that. But Isaiah 50 talks about too. God is my helper. I will never ever be ashamed or put, put, put to shame or confounded. God is my help. God is with me. Yeah. And, uh, and we said this in one segment I was teaching. I said we like to, we like to when it's all over, then we like to praise God. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to praise God until I'll get on the other side. You ain't going to get to the other side. Right. <laughs> if you don't obey. And so that many of us, God has told us to do stuff, and we disqualify ourselves. Well, what if this happens? What if this don't happen? Well, actually, I, I got a list. <laughs> Let's see. I got so much here. I know I won't get to it all today. I just brought it anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what if I don't do it? The Lord speaking. Okay, why is it so difficult? Because people are afraid to fail. People don't want to sacrifice. You know, people might criticize me. It might cost me too much. If I give this, now I'm not talking about giving, but of myself or my time, what if I don't get this back? I don't want people to criticize me. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want, what if it doesn't work? I don't want to make other people feel uncomfortable. I'm, these are reasons why people don't 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 follow God. They don't don't follow God. But they want but they want God to show up. God, you know, I got other stuff I really want to do right now. You know, you you know I retire in five years. He know, but he might be trying to set you up so you can enjoy your retirement. Beyond five years. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. How come people don't obey God? Well, you know, uh, what are people going to say? I might get persecuted. I told you, I think you're an author. I may not, I may not do it all right. Well, that won't be the first time. <laughs> Right? Right, right? We're talking about God, man. So, so, but we want, we want the miraculous. We want, we want to see the hand of God. We want to see Jesus manifest. Well, he's not going to manifest if I don't follow him and do what he tells me to do. Why would he, why would he show out like that? And I'm in, I'm not what he told me to be. I'm not doing what he told me to do. He's not going to support that. Because if he, if he showed up and manifested like that, and I'm out of place, I'll stay there. He doesn't want me to stay there. Are y'all wait? Yeah. And so one of the reasons why a lot of times we get frustrated. We get frustrated. I, I'm frustrated with this spiritual experience. It, it's not that you're bad, and I, but, but you could just be out of place. And haven't done what he told you. Like, I mean, I, this, this is part of my checklist. I'm like, okay, you know what? This is going on too long right here. What's up? He said, well, you got to backtrack. Lord, 
Lord, where did I miss? Where did I get off? Your path is over here. When did I get over here? That's what I do. And because, because that's why he said, he told, he told the prophet, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain you what? There. Not here. There. Not where you want to be. There. And so if I got to go there, if I, if I stay here, God can't, he can't manifest because I'll stay here. I'll think, wow, why, why change my life? Now, he loved me, so he won't let me crash and burn and come to heaven early. And sometime he will. He'll let me. The devil will send me. So, <laughs> the best place to be, the best thing to do, what did God tell me? And see, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. This is just, I'm just sharing. I can't expect God to give me more instructions. Why would he give me more instructions now I'm more accountable? That's why I seem like something. I don't ever hear from God. You just told on yourself. Why would he give me more instructions and make me more accountable and I ain't even doing this? So what I'm telling you, what I'm teaching you is, is and, and we, can, we can correct this before we get to the car. And it's simple. And I'm not just talking about, just talking about, you know, obviously we're talking about scripture. But God may tell you, I don't want you um, hanging with these people anymore. You need to let them go. For now, just for now. Well, well. But God knows more than you know. All right. <laughs> okay, I, 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 uh. Okay, so why is it difficult to follow? I mentioned this in the offering. Let me deal with it now. All those things I just listed are reasons why people want to take the easy way out. They want to take the easy route. And as I said a minute ago, if you always take the easy way, life will be hard. Because see, you need battles. Battles are necessary to get to where God is trying to take you. They're necessary. Well, I don't want to go there. No, that's why he said you are more than a conqueror. They're necessary to 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 flex your conquering muscles. He said in 1 John, this is the victory that overcomes the world. So I need battles from the world to flex my overcoming muscles. Glory to God. Um, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Well, I will never know that if I don't hit the world head on and overcome everything it throws at me. Yeah. Yeah, so so I can't, if I just take, if I just do what's easy, life will be hard. But if I do what's hard, life will become easy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I, 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 I can do hard. Everybody say, I can do hard. I can do hard. You can do hard. Well, well, it's, I can't do that because I, I, I don't have the money. It's hard to get the money to do that. I can do hard. Well, at my age, at my age, it's hard to do that. It's hard to do that at my age. Say what? I can do hard. Okay, everybody participate, Jim. No, no, we just qualify ourselves. At my age, oh, Lord, that's too hard. You can do hard. You've done hard before? Yes. Look at you. You've done hard before. Yes. You can do hard again. Yes. I don't know if I can work through this. You can do hard. You're equipped to do hard. You're, 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 you're empowered to do hard. And if God tells you to do it, you can do hard. Yes. You overcome hard. That's how you get testimony. Yes. You deal with hard and you come through. Yes. But we want the easy route. 
Well, I'm going to just, I ain't going to say nothing because if I don't say nothing, anybody won't nobody know. God knows. You can do hard. Well, it's hard to come back. I can do hard. Yeah. I can do hard. You think it was hard for Peter when he denied the Lord? Wasn't that hard? But guess what? Jesus came looking for him, and that's what Jesus is doing right now. Man, you're not doing this by yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to tell you, you're not doing it by yourself. He said, I will help you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll sustain you. You can do hard because he's helping you do hard. But I got to, Lord, what do you want me to do? What are, you, what are you telling me to do? Because in that is the power to move forward and bust hard upside the head. Who? Do hard. You can do hard. Yes, sir. So I'm gonna say this now. Don't get mad at me, okay? Quit making excuses. Everybody got an excuse. Just quit making excuses. What else? I wrote something else down. Where is it at? Oh, let go of your excuses and stop giving yourself a pass. You judging everybody else. I don't know why they don't. Well, what about you? We ain't forget everybody else. What about you? You can't give yourself a pass. You always talk about yeah. <laughs> You know, it's so, isn't it easy to, they ought to do this. They ought to do that. I don't know why they do it. Well, what about you? Well, look, what about you? Turn that eye on you. What about you hiding behind excuses? What about you giving yourself a pass? What about you keeping the bar? To, raise the bar on yourself. Y'all going gonna, gonna to love me after this. I'm saying, man, raise the bar on yourself. Require, listen, make a commitment to what you committed to. Look, you don't need adult supervision. Make the commitment to what you committed to. You know, challenge yourself. Make, discipline yourself. Make yourself do what you don't want to do. You can do hard. Man, I'm going to do okay, baby. Yeah, check yourself. Check yourself. Quit looking for somebody to, to agree with you on your lies. I mean, excuses. Find you, you know, you're looking at let's see, so also going through it too. Let me take her to lunch so we can talk about it. How you doing? I'm doing all right. What you, you need to get around some folks that are going to lift you up and, and challenge you. I don't need nobody, I don't need nobody you know, gonna feed me and my weakness. We all in the hall pen. <laughs> don't nobody support me. It's so hard. Did God tell you? God already got your support lined up, baby. And I, I told y'all, I told y'all like how this thing, man, how we how, you gotta, you gotta. We serve Jesus. You got to quit letting the world dictate to you who you are, what you have, and what you can do. And if God told you to, to, to go open up a, a, a rehab center, start. Remember I told you the other day, just start in the direction. Some folks ain't even going, moving in the direction. I, I know folks, I, I, I know, I know, they ain't got no, ain't even got no. Don't even have a high school education. Yeah. None of millionaires. Because yeah. they just, God said what God told them to do. What's your problem? You got all that paper up on the wall. <laughs> well, it's not about, and, and, and that's the other thing, and I've been saying it for years, that, you know, if you're going to go to school, find out what God wants you to do. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Amen. Because you can wait four, five, six, seven, 18 years doing something. God never even, God never <laughs> I know, I know a lot of times we don't want to hear that kind of stuff, but I'm telling you, that's, <sighs> we don't pick what we do, we discover. Lord, what do you want me to do? What school do you want me to go to? What, what church am I supposed to be in? What church am I supposed to be in? I'm serious. Who is the mouthpiece you got for me right now? All through the scripture, 
I, 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 you know, I've studied all the miracles. I've studied all the miracles uh, in days go by. One of the things that's, that you'll see, when God was trying to, getting ready to change somebody's life, change the season of their life in a major way, he always gave them an instruction. And they had to follow the instruction, and that's where they saw Jesus. Amen. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. I don't want to wash in the pool of Siloam. I want to wash in the pool of Salami. <laughs> well, go ahead and wash in that pool, and you'll come back with the same eyes you left with. Yeah. Yeah. See, they had to follow the instruction. Yeah. Nam, 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 whatever the boy's name, the general, he wanted to get healed of leprosy. And the, the man of God, God's mouthpiece, Old Testament, God's mouthpiece, he said, go, 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 go jump in the lake seven times. And he got, the Bible said he got angry and got indignant. He said, I thought you were going to come to my house and wave your hand over me like Benny. I thought you, and the Bible said he got angry. Y'all remember that? And guess what else? He still had leprosy while he was angry. But here come a girl, a little insignificant in, in terms of, because they didn't mention her name, and but she just worked there. And she said, well, you know, it's the Lord. If they ask you to do something hard, uh, sir. Would you would you do it? And she said, "Get out of here." And he said, "You know what? She's probably right, cause God will send you somebody. God sent somebody this morning. I'm speaking to some of y'all right now. You wondering why? How come I can't seem to hear from God? Why? Is, why is this this thing so boring? Because you're boring. <laughs> no, what I mean by that is, okay, I'd find another word. Because, you, because you're not obeying, following God. If you just go back, and, and I'm not talking about some major thing. I'm just talking about, what did he tell you to do? He may say, make sure you hug everybody in the house before you leave the house. If God tells you that. Yeah. Well, what's that got to do with you? You don't even know. And you don't. But you just obey. We obey without full understanding. They didn't want to get out the boat. It's going to storm, Jesus. But they got out. Don't, we can't lean to our own understanding. You have a presence of God in you. You can do hard because <laughs> you have an advantage. He said, we can do all things through what? Christ. Christ, who does what? That's why I can do hard. So I don't need to think about how hard something is. I need to think about ah, the advantage I got. They can't, whoop, they can't beat me. They can't even outthink me. I got the wisdom of God. I got a piece of the same wisdom that created yes. this joint. <laughs> no, that's what you got to, really. Uh, 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 Philippians 2.13 says, it's God who that work in you to will and to do what? His good pleasure. That's what I operate on. I mean, I'm just saying what we say. That's what I operate on. So Jesus said, go. And they're like, okay. All right. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. So so we're going to let go of the excuses and stop giving ourselves a pass, right? <laughs> and commit to do the things that you don't want to do but need to do. And then you're going to keep the commitment to your commitment. Okay. Let's, uh, I want to give you this. Well, I don't even know if I need to give you this now. Well, I always like to give an example. But, um, okay, go to Luke chapter 5. I think I... But then again, maybe I don't. I don't know. Maybe I don't need to do that. Hmm. Um... Let me give you this. 
Skepticism has robbed many people of the blessing of God. Get skepticism. Because we want to analyze, scrutinize, and, and come up with things to make us feel comfortable. You know. How come you don't how come you don't go to church regularly? Well, you know, I just, you know, I, you know, pastor kind of recycled the messages and you know, it's No, we talking about you. We talking about pastor. Just say I don't want to. At least that'll keep you from lying. The lying is a sin. Vicky, you coming? Uh, you coming to my house? Today? No, I have so much to do, and you know, I just really just don't have the time. No, just say I don't want to. No, just say no. The complete sentence. Yes. You don't have to explain. You start explaining. You want to start lying. Yes. Just say uh, you want to do this. No. <laughs> Any more? No. That's a complete sentence. I don't have to explain to you. I don't have to explain to you why. I, you, <laughs> See, I'm saying that because that kind of stuff helps you get beyond what people think. We think we always got to please other people. We, we, we perform for other people so much that we think we got to say something to get their approval and to appease them with why I, I'm, 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 I'm not consistent or diligent and disciplined. I don't have to tell you what. No. How come you're coming? Because I slept in. But skepticism, skepticism has robbed us because we want to analyze. And then we're trying to figure, just talk. Uh, we try to figure other folks out. Instead of asking her, what's the problem? You know, she probably, you know, she probably. <laughs> and you don't know what she's dealing with. Right. She could have got a bad doctor's report and ain't trying to talk to nobody right now. Anyway. But what I want to talk about, what I'm talking about is, 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 is getting out of the boat and, and, and not allowing, not allowing, I don't know, not allowing anything or anyone or the fear of something stop me from obeying God. And then if God called me and see, okay, let's, let's do this. Let's, I want you to think about something. Think about, think about all the stuff you're doing now and putting a lot of energy into can you honestly say, God led you, directed you into that? And he still, because he'll, he'll, he'll put you in stuff and say, okay, time's up, put a plug. That's the plug. Over. Think about it. Did he, did he, is, is God in it? Is he in it? Because I want to see the miraculous, overwhelming, unexplainable power of God. Jesus said, I will manifest myself to you. But he won't if I'm not in place. And then when he speaks, I got to act. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I don't know if you want to ask that question, though. What we sing the song? Speak, Lord, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord, speak, Lord. I need a word from you. And that's the thing. We need a word from God because if I get a word, all I need is one word. Man, I tell you, I went tonight about the word God gave me, and, and I live on that word. I've been living off that word for, for 20 some years. And, and, and it's a word from God. It's in the Bible, but it's, God spoke that to me. I didn't just read the word, God spoke that word. And I would be absolutely um, out of my mind if I let it go. How 
Hallelujah. You feeling something? You can do this. I know I mentioned the Sunday. Uh, when to. Okay, so I asked you that. Now, all the stuff that you like, yeah, God, God, God told me to do this. I know God is in this. I know. I know this is God. I know God. I know I follow God. Well, here's the deal. I don't care how tough it gets. I don't care how hard it gets. God's not going to let you fail. But you got to hang on to God, you told me this. No matter who comes, goes, no matter what promises are made that are unfulfilled, God's not going to let you fail. He's responsible to, for you to go to the other side. And then there's some things God will tell you to do that's going to be painful. Going to be painful. I told y'all about some stuff the other day. Painful. Painful to you. Painful to others around you. But God got you. And he'll make sure you don't get hurt. That you, you 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 all get burned and, and he'll make sure. See, why did God do that? Because he wants you to have a dependence on him. And all you gotta do is experience it one time, and you're like, man, shoot, God is good, and I know God got me. But you gotta get out the boat. In fact, I wouldn't even get out the boat unless I got a word. Yeah. That's good. I wouldn't take one of them tests and say, Well, you're good at this, you're good at that. Man, I, well, okay, you know what? You can take the tip. Take the tip. But, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to say, ah, oh, daughter. But after you finish that test, you say, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Because in the na cause see, there's some stuff inside you don't register on a test that does not register on a test. So I praise God for all, the, all, that, all of that. But there's some stuff in me you can't find no test for. It, it ain't been in a test tube or nothing. <laughs> It's straight from heaven. You believe that? Yeah. I believe that. I, I, yeah. <sighs> so, so if you got a problem right now, you know, if, yeah, yeah, God, I'm stuck. Unplug. Unplug. You say, Lord, you saw me acknowledge you in all my way. This is going on in my life. I don't know what to do. Ain't that what the song say? I don't know what to do. I need a word from you. That's a good word, good song. Lord, I don't know what to do. Remember we talked about Wednesday. David inquired of the Lord. Lord, what should I do? And God directed him. And when God directs you, you're going to overtake, pursue, overtake, and do what? Recover, Recover all. all. So it's God. That's, 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 that's it, man. I was going to read something. Hallelujah. You know what? I don't need to read this. I don't need to read it. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Let it go. One last point. Oh, not a point statement. <clears throat> Logic produces order, but faith produces miracles. Logic produces order. Faith produces miracles. One word from God can change your life. When? Forever. Go dip in the river seven times. Launch out into the deep. Ten lepers. Go show yourself to the priest. Well, there's nothing, anything logical about that. I remember one time the Lord spoke to me. This is when we, we was focused on getting out of debt. And the Lord told me to, to put you know how you get mail and they have advertisements in it. God said, when you send your bill back, you put an advertisement in it. They sending you advertisement, trying to get you deeper in debt. You send something back to them. And I started doing it, and I don't even know really, really remember how long it took, but I started getting my bill, and uh, you know I thought these things were done all automated, you know, but I guess people got to put them in there, and had a little postage stick them on it. Oh, thank you, Mr. Brandy. That really, that really blessed me or something. And I got about two or three of those little posters and little smiley face. And uh, the next thing I know, 
I didn't have a, I didn't have a car payment anymore. Amen. I remember one time we, uh, we, we, man, man, we, we owed the VA a whole bunch of money, a whole bunch, because, because Pastor did something that wasn't uh, 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 smart. I was trying to find a big word. <laughs> was smart, and I said, Lord, uh, I need help. And uh, and God, it was during Christmas time. We had just gotten up here, I think, 1992, around Christmas time. And uh, and you know, I mean, well, God told me what to do, and and uh, <laughs> He told me to bless the people. And I said, Okay, this is this is for that house. This is to be. It. And so anyway, we did it. And then I got a I got a nice Christmas card from the from the. Uh, what a company that was. They said, we want you to know, no, what well, was in the government? Yeah. And they said, we want you to know that uh, we, we are releasing you. And this is what my prayer was. Lord, we need to be released from this liability. It is. That's the exact word. I still got the, the letter. I be saving them testimonials. And every time the devil try to push me in the corner, I just pull one of them letters out. There you go. What'd that say? What'd that say? But, um, Obeying God, I don't. I'm not, I'm not perfect at it, but I, I got enough sense to know you keep moving forward. You keep doing what I told you to do. Last, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God has not called any of us to fail. He's not called. Go ahead and stand up with me, please. He's not called any of us to fail. He's not called any of our family to go down the tube. He's not called any of our marriages to suck. He's not, you know, I mean, you know, you sound something good in him. That's why you married him. Praise the Lord. There's still something there. No, really. I mean, but we changed. We don't need to look. You know, we had, me and sister had a discussion yesterday. And I mean, it's amazing how you change. You just change. You just change. And so we talking about, okay, so what do you, what does this mean to you? And how do you, how do you want this done? And she said, oh, okay. Because I told her I had a request. And this is what I need from you. So, oh, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you said. Okay. We ain't alone to debate. We're married. We're partners for life forever. Yeah. Sure. I'm saying, don't nobody want me. Don't nobody want her. <laughs> No, that's what we tell each other all the time. We don't nobody want. I mean, we all right now, but don't nobody want us. We made for each other. I only want to think about Jesus. I only want to think about that. Anyway, anyway, here's the deal. We want you. We want everybody in here to experience this thing. I mean, we. It's good. It's good, and it's for everybody. So I want to pray over you. I'm going to ask you to abandon every excuse. Father, you, this is a word for Lighthouse. This whole ministry is, is a testament of your faithfulness. One word, and we're still stepping out on that word. And Father, but you told me years ago, many, many, 20 years ago, that the success of this church, not so much the success of it, the, the impact of the church would be people seeing the fruit in the lives of those who attend. And it would work both ways. Some people stay away from here in the grove because of some of the things they see in people who attend here. But then people will be drawn and then they can hear this word and then they can get it and take it and give it to someone else because of what is manifesting. We've had enough sermons. We've been to enough convocations and conferences and we've been to enough of them. It's time to see manifestation. And Father, like I told you, I want to narrow the gap between what I read and what I see in my life. And I thank you for teaching me how to do that. I want the same thing for everybody who called this their church. So, Father, I pray over, over this group of people here this morning. I pray that they would hunger, thirst after your plan and your purpose for their lives. 
I pray in the name of Jesus that every hindrance, that everything that's pulling them away from the plan, that's pulling their passion away from you, that they'll take authority over it in the name of Jesus. I pray that they recognize every decoy that's, that's, that's stealing the insight from the, your word, God, that they would eradicate the influence of the decoy over their lives. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that they would, my God, that they would not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, but that they would not meditate in the word of God and, and, and see you as their shepherd and as their Lord and as their, as their protector. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that every excuse is abandoned. I pray in the name of Jesus that we would understand that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we can do anything the Bible says we can do. We can do everything you said we can do. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray over this house, over this group, that we are not just hearers of the word, but we are doers. We're not just doers, but we are manifestors in the name of Jesus. So I I expect supernatural signs and wonders and miracles and supernatural provisions and supernatural relational miracles and hallelujah physical miracles emotional miracles comeback miracles in the name of Jesus father we're getting out of the boat we're following you we're following hard after you speak to us Lord Speak to us, Lord. And Father, wherever we're in disobedience, even right now, we ask you to show us again. And my prayer is that we all will be obedient. Obedient. Hmm. Okay. Now here's, okay. You know, I actually said this, but this is what God has given me now. He said, remind you, just because, just because you have friction, misunderstand. People funny, people quit the drop of a hat. You don't quit your job just because somebody don't like you on the job. But anyway, you got, you, you're highly motivated to work through that. But in the, in the, in the ministry of Jesus, in the body of Christ, we, we got power not to be offended and we get offended to drop of a hat. Just because something doesn't go your way doesn't mean you stop being obedient. If, you know, those years, if God called you to this church, you ain't gonna like everything. I don't even like everything. You know, I'm, we're going to my conference this week and this is my 20th year. I've been, been part of this organization for 20 years. I'm on the board and everything and been there 20 years. I don't like everything. I don't like everything. Oh, but God told me to be there. Cool. So it ain't, what I like it has nothing to do with it. So, so get that, get that from off the top of the list. You're not, you don't like everything about your family. You don't like everything about your job. You don't like everything about your house. You don't like everything about your, your you know, your body. You're like, oh, I can't stand it. You don't like everything. But what did God tell you? Because if God sets you here, God knows what you need here. Yeah. Now, if God tells you to leave here, you need to get the heck out because what God has for you is somewhere else. Praise God. And you could be the barrier for somebody else. So, so let's just fall in love with Jesus, man. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We're following you. We're going to do the works of God. Now I want to pray before we go. If you're here this morning and you're not born of God, you're not born of God. I said earlier that, you know, Acts 17 says we're offsprings of God. We, and uh, 1 John talks about we're born of God. Yeah, we're children of God. And that's not just, you know, you have to receive the gift of salvation. To many that received him, to them he gave the power to become a son. He never asked you to quit doing anything. He never asked you to give up. He asked you to receive. When you receive him, you can put away stuff that's, uh, that, is, that is not good. So I want to pray now. And I'm going to ask those of you 
you say, Pastor, I'm not where I need to be with God. And then those of you who you never experienced the, the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, you need the power. That's, that's, your, that's your difference maker. Father, I pray for those who are outside of the will of God right now. I pray that they, I pray for repentance. I pray for acceptance of the gift of God. In life. Father, I pray for those that don't have this power of the Holy Spirit working in their lives, that they would receive him today. Now I take authority over everything that would try to prevent that from taking place. Every satanic encroachment in the name of Jesus, I stop you right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, before we go, and, and this is so important, so important, so very important. This is why we, we are here. Thank God. 38 souls this week. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. We make much of what Jesus makes much of. And there's some of you, God is calling you to outreach and to, you believe there's a call of God on your life. You need to, you need to get busy with that. You don't need to keep telling folks about it. You need to demonstrate it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got time. Hallelujah. You have time. I don't have, yes, you do. You got time. God will make everything work for you. All right. Is there anyone?